Today we are back at Florence Motor Speedway for the first race of the late mile season, hopefully at least. As you can see, it's a little wet. We did just get the command that we have nine minutes until practice starts. The track still looks wet, so I'm thinking that we're probably just going to go out there and putt around, get some heat in it. But this is going to be the season opener for late miles. I I'm done with legend cars. I really just picked up the legend car stuff to have some seat time and extra content to put out, and it didn't go according to plan. I The GoPros shit out, and you can't see anything for the second week, and then I was really sick for week three. The legend car stuff is behind us for a little while, and we're ready to pick up on the late mile season so Florence has always been a pretty good track for us but this is gonna be a little bit more of a rush schedule so this is like real fast everything's being quick today at least we're trying to get it all in today we have potentially an hour of practice and then we immediately qualify I think there might be a small gap in there and then we have 15 minutes off after qualifying and then we have 125 lap race if at any point we get the lap 75 the race is over if it rains they're really trying everything they can to get this race in today could be a quick event or we might be here racing on Wednesday. Who knows? If you watched the last Florence video, then you saw Dale Jr. was actually in the vlog. Well, he's actually racing again today, so I don't think we're going to have time to really like catch up with him too much, but he's going to be racing, so that that's cool. I don't want it to be something minuscule, but you know, at the same time, it's like I, I'm doing my own race and stuff like that, so it's like we got to focus on our stuff, but it is worth noting. So with that being said, I do have to get ready because we are getting ready to go out for our first and only practice. I'm ready to get after it. It's been a while since I've been in the uh, car. The last time I was in the late model, we did win, technically. But yeah, I'm ready for a good time. Like I said, Florence has always been a fun track for me. Who knows? Maybe we can finally pick up a first. No, I can't say that shit. If I say that shit, I never fucking win. I never win. I, 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 I caught it. Backtrack. I caught myself. I'm going for a good run at Florence today. You know, we'll see what that good run looks like. Uh, it'd be nice to get the year started off strong, so let's hope we can do that. How much longer we got? He's like two minutes. What's up, y'all? Subscribe to Air Dunk. That's a Kubera snapper. That's badass. Here you go, AJ. This thing gonna take a bite of your ass, AJ. <laughs> hey guys, turkey. So practice wrapped up, and I think we were fourth or fifth. Uh, when it came down to it. We didn't even put on our sticker tires. We uh, didn't get the member that practice session got cut in half. But like I said, everything's really upbeat right now, so we're about to qualify. So we go out 26, which is, they just inverted everything. So it means we're faster in practice, which means we get to go out later in qualifying. We're gonna be in good shape. I, I like our race pace and stuff, and the car handled well. The track position usually isn't too important here, but you don't know how this race is gonna play out. Cause like I said, if we get the 75 and it rains, it's over. Usually you're not really inputting like a rain strategy into a late model race, but you never know. It might be, advantageous to start up front just in case everybody goes and it looks like the rain's coming then we got to be up there battling it out and uh, you know getting what we can get so I don't know how this race is going to play out but I know we are in good shape and I'm excited for today I'm excited to be back at Florence excited to be back in the late model my home but I'm not getting my ass kicked as of right now uh, unlike the legend card deal so let's jump into qualifying and see what happens I just want to shout out my fan base for coming out and repping it's like y'all are honestly the greatest I don't know why they're, they're standing at that other junior's car. I don't, I don't really know why, but I, I'll be here, so. So, qualifying just wrapped up, and we're about to get right into the race. We did wind up getting the pole. 
So that's a good start to the late mile season. I don't even know if I really want this, to be honest, because now I'm going to be the one that kind of dictates the pace for the race, and uh, I don't want to be the guy that finds out how hard it's too hard. But then again, it doesn't really matter because I, I know what I'm doing when it comes to this track. I know how hard it's too hard, yada, yada, yada. Just the urgency might be a little bit different, but I think we will probably be okay as far as the rain goes. It's not coming until 4. It's 12 o'clock right now, so we got, well, honestly, the last time we were here, it took four hours to finish the race, so maybe not. So we're about to get into the race, and uh, let's see if we can start the year off right with a solid finish. I'm not going to say what I want with a solid finish. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Florence Motor Speedway in Timmonsville, South Carolina, for Flow Racing's coverage of the 8th Annual Icebreaker presented by Aaron's. I did not think this was going to happen. When I pulled onto the property and I heard race cars on the racetrack, I thought there was no way. I think the jaws of every <laughs> meteorologist who had eyes on this part of the country, they have to be on the floor right about now watching along on flow. Well, you can hear it from our uh, our cameras. The engines have fired here at Florence Motor Speedway. As you, can, you can see the lights are going to go off on the pace car this time, and the fans are on their feet here at Florence Motor Speedway. Pace car is going to dive to the safety of the pace Pit lane, and the field is going to work into the hands of Doug Barnes, and we are underway. Green flag is out for the eighth annual icebreaker. Lap number one sees Doug Barnes Jr. ahead. Connor Hall gets single file, but the battle is on for third. At the front of the pack, it continues to be Doug Barnes, who has been able to open up a bit of an advantage there by about three car lengths over Connor Hall, who holds down second spot. You know, that lead's not starting to look so large for Doug Barnes Jr. either. Just up the road, it's down to about a car length, maybe a car length and a half. Is contact made between Miracle and Connor Hall. Uh, but Doug Barnes Jr., uh, I mean, the 24-year-old out of Forest Hill, Maryland, was talking about getting out of his comfort zone at a lot of these type of flatter racetracks this year. That was a goal of his. He'll be running at Dominion a lot this year, which has a lot of banking. Three wide, though, for second. Miracle thinks better of it. Here comes Matt Cox as one car is slow and off the pace. That experience uh, with all the practice is now battle for the race lead. Matt Cox side by side with Doug Barnes who has led the opening 40 laps and Cox looking to take the top spot. Perhaps now is the time to go for Matt Cox. We saw him linger throughout the top five, make a few passes here and there. That was the first time he's had a look at the top spot over the fast qualifier and Doug Barnes, who was able to fend him off there that time through. It kind of looks like that Matt, since not being able to make that pass, is going to fall back in line at least for a little bit. At least as far as what timing and scoring is showing us, 70 laps to go. Doug Barnes has led and dominated pretty much this entire field field as we have our first caution here in the eighth annual icebreaker at Florence. There, we're hearing there's a car off the back straightaway. We can't see it from where we are in the booth. Pace car will dive down to the safety of pit lane and we will have our first restart once again with Doug Barnes who has led since the drop of the green flag. He has Matt Cox who has led off to his outside. Green flag back in the air and a decent restart there for Matt Cox but Barnes going to just clear him off at turn number two. It's going to be Cox closing up to about a half a car length off two as the leaders hit the backstretch. And so far, he and Junior have been locked together at the hip throughout most of this race. As you see the gap between the top two, Connor Hall has fallen back into the clutches of the rest of the pack. Yeah, Air Doug, if you if you have YouTube, go and, and look up Air Doug. He does an incredible vlog uh, of his racing experience. Again, he'll be running uh, at several tracks around the Virginia area. Uh, to run both at Dominion, South Boston, and he even said, quote, wherever this year. So a lot of plans here for Air Doug, uh, who has led since the drop of the green flag. Has a couple of car links over Matt Cox. Just past the halfway point here, and so far, Doug Barnes has been on a tear. He has been able to withstand whatever bit of pressure has been thrown his way, but just behind him, we're starting to see a little bit of that rubber band effect throughout most of the field. Meanwhile, the battle for the lead tightening up on the main straightaway as we come to 49 laps to go. Now, it was in this race a year ago 
we had kind of the same thing. Somebody dominated the opening 70 laps of this race. Uh, Kelly led until about 40 laps to go, and then Josh Berry just completely pulled away. So you have to wonder if this is around the time for that to be happening. And it seems like this is a cat and mouse game. Every time they get close, it seems like Barnes is able to find a little bit of something uh, in that race car, the number 88, to pull away. You can see down to about half a car length now. Matt Cox uh, sitting there and biding his time. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, the, the uh, sand is running out of the hourglass, uh, so to speak, here at this racetrack. And, and by the way, with this race being 125 laps, if the race were called right now, it would be official. One element that is going to come into play here in the not too distant future for the first time is that of lapped traffic. The leaders are now about to be on the same straightaway with the tail end of the pack. First car they're going to encounter is that of Kyle Plott. In fact, there's about four cars. There you see them all pretty much knotted together as Cox looks to the bottom. And this is right at the wrong time, just before they approach lap traffic. 40 laps to go, and perhaps a change for the race lead and the first time in this race. Side by side, off the corner, a near dead heat at the stripe. Barnes still led it, but oh boy, here comes Matt Cox. He makes the move, and a change for the race lead with 39 laps to go. Matt Cox leads the 8th Annual Icebreaker. And what a veteran move for Cox there. They saw them coming up on Kyle Plott as they went off of turn number two and it forced Barnes to give up quickly and fall back in line. Now they're about to overtake Brian Barnhill, who had a problem with the exhaust on the right side of that race car. He is about to go one lap off the leaders. He's fighting to stay up in that lead lap position. And now they're side by side in front of the race leader with Whitney Meggs and the other number four, Jaden Reyna, one of the Rev Racing development drivers. Currently side by side in front of your leaders. Here's the race for second on the racetrack. Pole sitter Doug Barnes and Connor Hall, who also will be going full-time with the Shad Bryant Racing Team in the Solid Rock Carriers Car Store for 2023. Top three, no lap traffic between them. Hall trying to close up on Barnes for second on the backstretch. At the moment, as Cox nurses about a one-car lane lead through turns one and two over Doug Barnes, who, to be quite honest, Blake, since losing the lead, Barnes has not lost too much speed. He's not allowed Cox to drive off into the sunset just yet. With 30 laps to go, Barnes may have another go at this. The driver of this three car while battling up towards the front. He worked his way through the pack on more than one occasion as we got a fight for the lead on the front stretch. Barnes pressuring Matt Cox for the top spot in one. Oh boy, good short track racing here. Doug Barnes down to the inside. We thought he was oh. fading, but maybe no. Side by side into turn number three. Here comes Doug Barnes. They are close. No contact made. 26 laps to go and the battle is on. Three cars under a blanket. Starting to see these cars dance a little bit coming off the corner. Last time Barnes got in the gas a little bit too hard. The back end stepped out this time a little more steady, but he can't get to the left rear fender of Matt Cox for the race lead. And Connor Hall is waiting in the wings. Back on the front stretch they come. Oh, you can see a little bit of a slide right there from Doug Barnes. Typical issue to see late in this race, but it doesn't slow him in turn number two. Lap traffic just up the road. Side by side for the race lead. Barnes with a hard charge down to the inside. He takes the race lead. Three wide for second. Barnes back to the point. A little bit of clear track. And then more lapped traffic that they're about to encounter and some very good cars, Blake. So 22 circuits left to go here in the 8th annual icebreaker at Florence Motor Speedway. And boy, have we seen them duke it out for the race lead. They are side by side, though, right in front of Doug Barnes. And you get a look at right this there point at in the race, Jr. Blake. In 15th. My apologies. At this point in the race, I have to wonder how many of these drivers are hoping for a yellow. Maybe they yes. were saving long enough. They need to get some of the track position back. And boy, what this would mean for Doug Barnes, who kind of talked about the black cloud that was looming over his head uh, throughout his season last year, and and how much it would mean for him to start out with a win. Thought he was close. Thought he deserved uh, a couple, a time or two. But boy, what it would mean for Doug Barnes here to make a statement win at a track like Florence Motor speedway and he has widened that gap between he and Connor Hall. It's about six, seven car lengths or so, so he is continuing to pull away. Also, you may notice the emblem on the front nose of that car. 
A little bit different. They slapped the Ferrari logo on the front bumper of that machine. It's kind of a running joke throughout his, his vlog and everything he puts out there. He's a driver that's got a lot of character, a lot of talent. Trouble, Dale Jr. Turn number three, Brandon Pierce and Earnhardt Jr. got together and there's damage to the front end of the three car. And as they go into turn number three, Junior coming from way back. The contact was between Burton and Brown. Pierce checked up to try to avoid getting involved, and Junior just didn't get the word in time. Doug Barnes, Connor Hall, just like they started this race, are duking it out for the race win. You have Matt Cox, Caden Honeycutt, just behind them, perhaps looking for their chance to break the ice. Connor Hall ahead by a little bit, though. On the restart, green flag is back out. And Doug Barnes looking to hold off the lead, but here comes Connor Hall to the top side. I think we're done with saving because Connor Hall is trying to rocket his way around the outside of Barnes for the race lead. Trouble turn two. That's Connor Zillish. We'll see if he's able to do it. Pace car is off once again. Good restart. Great restart for Connor Hall into one and two. They are dead even side by side. Barnes battling back on the top. And oh, Diaz may look to try to make it three wide with Matt Cox. Hall shuffles down to the bottom. Now it's Cox who looks down to the inside perhaps to go three abreast. Thinks better of it. Honeycutt holding a steady line up top in the 10 car. Going to move up to third as Barnes has company. We've seen Doug Barnes lose the lead. Get it back. Now can he fend off Connor Hall who is about two car lengths off from going to one. Ten to go next time by. Two hands in the air. It'll be ten. Couple cards fading. Sam Yarbrough has fallen far back but here comes Connor Hall trying to make a move. Seven Seven laps to go, though, for Doug Barnes to hang on. We may not be done yet with lapped traffic. Doug Barnes about to catch the back end of Whitney Meggs, who sustained some damage on the front end of her race car in one of the skirmishes. Six laps to go. Now five laps to go for Doug Barnes, who said he nearly threw up coming to his qualifying run in the South Carolina 400. He was so nervous about qualifying into that race, and yet here he is just a couple of months later leading and continuing to build upon his lead with Connor Hall. Four laps to go. Doug Barnes went out, won pole. He has been able to hold the lead. He's been able to take the lead on one, more than one occasion. Now he's got to hold on for two and a half more laps with a little bit more lap traffic ahead. And all he needs is this race to continue on. He has built up even a larger lead over Connor Hall. Two laps to go for Air Doug. White flag of the air. One more trip around for Doug Barnes Jr. The young man out of Forest Hill, Maryland, 24 years old, is perhaps looking for the biggest win of his late model stock career. Into three and four for the final time. Checkered flag in the air. And Doug Barnes Jr. Air Doug wins the eighth annual icebreaker at Florence Motor Speedway. But what a performance for car 88. I got to be honest, Blake, I do not recall a time where I had seen someone go out and dominate the first half of a race at Florence Motor Speedway in a late model stock car, lose the lead, and then get it back the old-fashioned way. He drove his way back up to and past Matt Cox and never relinquished the top spot after that. And there you see the Air Doug symbol on the top of the passenger side door for Doug Barnes. He's parking the Ferrari in victory lane here today. You know, there's one good way to try and help your YouTube channel, and that's win races. I think Air Doug did it right now, and you can see the reaction right there. He is one happy young man. Yeah, I think the stream is going to be uh, pretty popular this upcoming weekend <laughs> to see the behind-the-scenes footage of this one. What a race. And Doug Barnes climbs out of the cars, and the fans will salute him as he nearly slips off, <laughs> off of the race car. And, uh, boy, what a big win for this young man. I mean, I don't want to say it was easy, but, I mean, it's never easy. But, we, we, you know, we executed. We put ourselves in the position to, you know, make things happen. We got to set the pace, like I said, I wanted to do. And, you know, we, just, we put ourselves in the position to do that. Doug is your 2023 Icebreaker winner. Are we done? I want to give a shout out to my sponsors, Harder Boy Consulting, Barnes Paving, and uh, you know it's a good start to the year. <laughs> I, I don't know if I've ever seen somebody ask, "Hey, are we done? Is the interview over?" <laughs> yeah. For <laughs> Got it done.
done. But I don't, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. That thing was on the rails, and I, I really can't believe we dominated the way that we did. Uh, just a hell of a race, man. I mean, I always say I put it, put us up against anybody in the country, and this is the, you know, the top field this weekend. This is like the start of everything. So to go out there and put on a performance like that, I'm hoping that's how we're going to set the tone for the season. I really, I can't get over the fact like how well the car handled. It didn't seem to matter how hard I had to push. I never really pushed outside my comfort zone too much. The pace was never really that fast. So I was able to just to run what I wanted to run. I had the track position and um, finally get a win at Florence. I know he wasn't in the video like he was last time or I didn't really race against him too much. But you know, Dale Jr. did race in this race and I grew up watching him. To race against him won is, is badass. And to win the race, you know, even though if we didn't really have many head-to-head -head moments on the track or any head-to-head -head moments on the track, it's it's still cool. And uh, I get to say for the rest of my life, I want to race a deal Jr. was in. And if you would have asked me 10 years ago if that would have ever been a possibility, I would have said no. With that being said, we have a couple weeks off. Our next race is going to be at Hickory on March 3rd. We may have a test session before then. If we do, we'll make a short video out of that. Season's back, and uh, I'm ready to, to pump out some videos for you. We got a lot more races on the schedule than we did last year, and it felt like we were racing all the time already. So I'm super pumped for this year. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Stay up to date with everything that we got going on. And also like the video. I was pushing it out there to new people. Just want to give a big shout out to my crew and uh, everybody, Ryan, for filming. Cameron's going to be so pissed when he watches this. Because Cameron, every time I do an outro, Cameron's like, <clears throat> you going to thank anybody? I always forget. We will see you guys at Hickory in a few weeks. I don't know what to say, man. What a way to start the year. Go, go.